very good. So um, we founded the Diabetic Remission Clinic because we figured out, well, some cats go into diabetic remission uh, and some don't. So there is a trick that we're missing here. So remission can occur in cats, um, which is a state in which we don't use any insulin anymore because it's not necessary anymore. And that has created quite a stir or a hype in, in recent years as well, and very much a hunt for the recipe. So how can we get our remission rates as high as possible? Because wouldn't you want to uh, stop injecting insulin if you had a diabetic cat in your hands as well. Now, because of this stir and the hype, uh, what happens in, uh, in in modern times, everyone turns to Google, and that's what our owners are doing as well. And if you Google diabetic remission, or you use Dr. Google to uh, investigate diabetic remission, and that's sometimes quite good for us as clinicians to do as well, because we'll find all the ammunition that our clients are using in our consult room ourselves. Um, if you Google diabetic remission in cats, you'll see that we've got 163,000 results in 0.24 seconds. So a lot of stuff is out there, and some of it is very useful, and some of it is, of course, not very useful at all and causes a lot of uh, confusion. Um, I just did this uh, for, for this particular webinar and looked at some hits that I got as well. And one of these pages said, using recommended methods of home urine and blood glucose monitoring, it has been reported that 70% of diabetic cats will go into remission. Now, I find that an incredibly high remission rate. And uh, we do uh, our best in our clinic, and we do not achieve that percentage at all. So, um, But clients will see this. And if we don't get their cat into remission, they will potentially be dis disappointed and go to a different practice. But it's good that we know that this information is out there so that we can counteract it in our com communication with our clients. So um, I asked myself, who also has a 70% remission rate? Can maybe uh, Anthony uh, keep an eye on the, on the chat box and, and see if anyone comes up with that sort of figures? Or do we think we've got an overwhelming consensus that 70% is quite, quite high? Um, Just looking this particular on, on the of this box. page featured in the just looking on the chat box, I don't yes. think anybody has said that, but that's part of the reason why, you know, we've set up pet webinars is because there is so much rubbish spoken on, on the internet, and if we can have people like yourselves Absolutely. and vets writing the content, then we know that the quality and the, uh, the, the accuracy of the results is going to be so much better, don't we? Absolutely, absolutely, totally concur with that. Um, but uh, yeah, it's tempting for owners to believe this. It is, this uh, particular piece was uh, written by a Donna Spector, and she features as the regular vet in an Ellen DeGeneres show over in the States as well. So it comes across very believable, yes. and, and therefore, yeah, it is, it is quite treacherous to then deal with those opinions in the console room scenario. So it's good that people um, try to um, be critical about actual peer-reviewed uh, evidence that is also out there and be aware of that so that we can feed that back to our clients who have read other stuff uh, on, the, on the internet as well. There's another page that I found as well which spoke that I discovered and tried the tight regulation protocol pioneered by a Dr. Hodgkin. Um, she's the leading authority with, with regards to um, treating feline diabetes mellitus. Just to give you a flavor of what's, what's out there and which which ages owners will see as some of the top hits on Google as well uh, as soon as their diabetic cat uh, has been diagnosed by yourself. Um, so there are, in summary, a few schools of thought about how to treat feline diabetes mellitus in the best possible way. On the right, we've got the traditional list who use uh, any insulin that is available and that is licensed. Uh, they go for less intense management on the left. Uh, perhaps we've got the other extreme where uh, people focus on new insulin types, they do daily blood glucose recommendations, and they aim very much for the cure. And I guess in this uh, next 40 minutes, we need to decide which school we want to attend to. Um, so um, let's, let's try to do that on the basis of the evidence that's out there. And the evidence was analyzed by uh, our feline diabetic remission clinic. That was the first step. Apart from clinical trials, we also looked at what evidence actually has already arisen from the research in the past. So that's our mission number one, found out what we already know. We also are trying to find out what we do not know yet. 
and uh, we try to educate about the known knowns and the known unknowns um, uh, of di diabetic remission uh, uh, phenomena. And that's part of giving this fam uh, some webinar as well. We try to spread the word about the truth behind feline diabetic remission as well. But if we focus on finding out what we know already, we uh, produced a systematic review already, which you can find in the veterinary journal, uh, where we did a, a thorough analysis using a, a Cochrane collaboration approach, which is a really systematic black and white approach of analyzing the uh, quality of the evidence that's out there to figure out what what do we know about diabetic remission. So this is very fact driven rather than opinion driven and it focuses very much on the quality of the evidence. So we had a critical look at the recent developments which I want to do with you today as well. We tried to separate the known unknowns from the uh, known unknowns so that we have a confident discussion with diabetic cat owners and we try to then by doing so convince owners to participate in an evidence-based safe protocol adapted to the specific cat owner combination. So um, I spoke about questions that we can be confronted with in the consulting uh, scenario. Here's uh, a scenario. Uh, this particular owner says, food company access, I should be feeding a high fiber diet. Diabetescat.com says a high protein diet is essential for my diabetic cat. You gave me Purina DM or some other brand. Uh, I don't mind what, what brand you mentioned. But what diet is really the best for my diabetic cat and why? Which is a good question and a question we need to be able to answer. So um, let's have a, a little quiz here as well. We've got this cat who was diagnosed with diabetes mellitus. He might be a bit on the chubby side. And uh, the options that I uh, would like you to choose from are the Hills WD, high fiber diet. Um, Hills ID, highly digestible diet, Purina DM, a tint uh, diet, and Purina DM, dried diet, or Royal Cannon, or Wolfram, whatever brand, I don't care about the brand, but it's about the philosophy behind these types of diets. Which diet would you like to start in this diabetic cat? Um, so uh, could we have some feedback, Anthony, yeah. about the response? Well, we've run the poll, and it's saying, what diet would you recommend? Um, We've got uh, obviously here just A, B, C, and D. So have you uh, perhaps call back the name of the diet as I as I give the answer? That would be great. Yeah. So uh, option A is the WD high fiber diet. So 42% have said A. Yeah. Uh, our ID is the highly digestible uh, diet. Option B. Nobody wants to use that. Yeah, uh, option C is the tinned, uh, low-carb, high-protein diet uh, uh, option. 43% uh, would like to use that. 40, it was yep. going up a bit, 48%. Okay, and uh, option D is the, the same diet as C, but then in a dried form, so high-protein, low-carb. And that's 19% would like to use that. So. As it stands at the moment, C is in first place with sort of 50-ish 50, 50 percent moving around a little bit, A at 30 yeah. percent, and D at uh, 19 percent. Great, great. Very good. I'll give answer to this uh, later on. I'll present you with a different scenario. This is also a cat diagnosed with diabetes, but also has uh, kidney disease, so renal disease. Mm -hmm. And I give you um, similar options here. Um, with, um, but slightly different, so uh, A is the same option, high fiber diet, dried form, B is a renal diet, thin form, C is a diabetic diet, thin form, and D is a diabetic diet, um, high protein, low carb, dried form. Uh, what's the response there? Just allowing people to vote now, so um, mm -hmm. just let that run for a few seconds. You should, uh, I'm sure many of you have been on webinars before, just literally click on which one you want. Uh, let's do that fairly quickly so that we can get on because I know Stane's got lots to tell us. Uh, so we'll we'll go with it there. I'll, I'll close the um, survey. 14% um, would like to use WD. 43% would go with the uh, kidney diet. Um, and 43% would go with the tinned diabetes diet, so it's a dead heat. Mm -hmm. So kidney or diabetes, I suppose it's whichever yep. one is, is the more relevant disease, the more important of the two diseases. Yep, absolutely. Absolutely. 